Okay, Marge, I'm gonna say something that's not very young adult like. I need some intense hot fan fiction. Sex. I need sex. I need sex. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Romance in the Monsters. This week, Steph and I are discussing a book that I love, and it is <laughs> Kitra and Lord Death by Martin Leavitt. Um, first off, let's just do a quick summary of what it's about. Go ahead. All right. So it starts off with um, our girl, Kitora, and she finds herself lost in the woods from chasing um, a heart, which is a... Sort of like, like a, uh, a, a rain, giant, like a reindeer, deer? reindeer. Yes, yeah. sure. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> it starts off with her getting lost in the forest, and it's days have passed, and she actually is dying, or maybe even dead at that point. And that's when she meets Lord Death, who at that point in time is has come to take her, basically, and she finds a way to trick Death by telling him a story and not completing the story. And so continues on their story, their own story, basically. And we get, I don't even know how to explain the story, but it's just, it's just, it was so rich. Yeah, so she, she tells stories and because her stories are so moving or, you, you know, like they speak to Lord Death. And so he wants yeah. to know more. He's intrigued. And so... Um, but she, she knows the power of her own stories. And so yeah. she stops and she says, well, I'll tell you the rest of the story if you allow me to live one more day. Exactly. And he asks her, what would you want out of that day? Like, wh what's, why is it like worth making me wait? Like, what's so special about that day? Mm -hmm. And she says, well, I'll, like, I mean, it doesn't go down that way, but essentially <laughs> she says that she wishes she would have found her one true love or her soulmate before dying yeah. and so he allows her he allows for one more day of her life to find that one true love um but first what did you think of this book because I don't actually know how you felt about this book yeah I'm I was trying... stressed about it <laughs> I was trying so hard not to say anything while reading this book because I wanted to save everything for the podcast um so I'll just start by saying <laughs> Okay. I loved it. You did. <laughs> like I absolutely I was so enthralled. I was, I know. I was like the story captivated me. I will admit the beginning I thought was kind of slow it is. because I just didn't think anything was happening, but like as the story progressed, mm -hmm. you realized everything had a meaning, everything had a purpose, and it was just the way it all unfolded. I, it was amazing. I, amazing. I I don't even remember how I found this book, but I um, I heard from a lot of people that this was a favorite of their of theirs mm -hmm. from when they were kids. Um, oh, yeah, because technically it's you know I think ages what like eight to fourteen or whatever. Yeah, it's a uh, yeah really young adult. Um, I mean it reads differently to me. I don't know about you, like it. it there's a lot of subtext in there that there I thought was lot. very uh, sexually coded. Let's just put it that way. No, there was a lot of subtext. And I feel like if I read this as a child, I think I, I would have liked it. But at the same time, I wouldn't have the full meaning of the story. It, yeah, it would have been, it would have been a completely different experience and definitely not as profound. I agree. Um, and so, yeah, I kind of found it out, like randomly. And I, I started it not really thinking it would have the impact on me that it had. Yeah. Um, but I kind of had the same experience as you where I was completely 
just hip- hypnotized. Just mm-hmm. I-, I started it and I couldn't I couldn't stop and I was just fully immersed into it. Yeah, it just I still think about it. Like it's it, it's I don't know. I don't know how to explain. It. I th- I feel like it sounds kind of cheesy, but it's like it's one of those books and the people that read it when they were kids, they kind of say the same thing. Like that story stayed with them and they reread it to the, mm-hmm. to this day. So um, Oh god. One thing that's kind of special about this book is that it's not a romance, really? Like, it, which kind of it shouldn't be on this podcast. <laughs> okay, I wouldn't say it's a romance. I think it's more of a it's love a fairy story. Tale. It's a fairy tale. No, no, no. I was just going to say it's not a romance, but it's more of like a love story in the sense where the romance, it is the main plot, but it also mm-hmm. isn't, if you get my meaning. Yeah, it has, it has elements of romance. There's yes. tropes in there that we can recognize as romance readers, but it's not structured like a romance. Mm-hmm. It's structured, at least to me, like a fairy tale. It's short, which fairy tales usually are. It's like it's lyrical in how it's told. It's full of symbols and subtext, and yeah. you know, it has like a emotional intensity to it just I through agree. the writing. Um, it's like atmospheric. Parts mm-hmm. of it are really dark, which I found was like really reminiscent of of like the Grimm tales or you know original tales like that, where it was yeah. very dark, um, but also hopeful. You know, like it's kind of cons- this constant like balance between darkness and, and hopefulness, I guess. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and like you said, it's slow. It's slow. Yeah, the, a- the action is. is not super present. Like it's not action packed. It's not. There's not a whole lot that happens. It's very exactly. much about Katira's journey as a character. She has to come to terms with certain things. Exactly. And I think as the story progressed, like she started off as like a young girl, but as the story progressed, she became a woman. It was she did. a story of her growth as a person and as an individual. And I thought the way the author did it was amazing. I honestly have nothing bad to say about this book besides I at the beginning was a bit slow, but that's not mm-hmm. even something bad. It's just at the end of the book you realized, as I said, everything had a purpose. Everything added up to where we ended up on the last page. Yeah. So I just want to quickly read um it's the last paragraph of the prologue because I think it's a very good way to describe this overall like a, a good feel of what the book is about or mm-hmm. how the book is. Um, And it says, I will tell you, and this is Keturah that's that's saying this, I will tell you a story that is all of those things, a story of magic and love, of daring and death, and one to to comfort your heart. It will be the truest story I have have ever told. Now listen and tell me if it is not so. And I just think, yeah, it is all those things. It's like a story of magic. It's a story of love. It's a story of daring and death because she's Mm -hmm. very courageous and, you know, does not let death uh walk all over her like she's very um she was brave yeah she was very brave and he's not having it at first but that's kind of why he falls in love with her he has been in love with her all those years which we learn (laughs) i just thought it was just her yeah it was her courage and her ability to convince him to keep her alive for another day is just their story was so well written and well thought out mm-hmm. and but it is a comforting story it Again, is like it's it's it is just like a fairy tale the fairy tales are comforting because it's something that you're used to it's you know what to expect you know how it will end this is like the ending of this book is no surprise Mm -hmm. you know this already or at least I think that you're supposed to start the book knowing how it ends or exactly some of the details like it didn't come as a surprise at least to me that death was Keturah's soulmate after all no it was not a surprise for me at all I just wanted to know how it would have happened and I it didn't click maybe I don't know it might just it might just have been me but it didn't click within me that it was that they loved each other her like their whole lives well basically mm-hmm. her whole life until they said it and it well, just I all think, made sense to me yeah I and I had like a point about this which is you know this is very much a book about stories within stories within stories because this book opens with Katura yeah. saying she will tell them a story which is the story of Keturah and Lord Death. And within the story, this story, exactly. she tells Lord Death 
stories. And so it's all stories yeah. within stories within stories and the power of them because she realizes this power that she has over death and uses it to her advantage. And one of the reasons why I bring this up is because part of me thinks, did she know all along that he was her soulmate and just had not come to terms with that that's a that, that's a valid question i think what i i what i interpreted um in the story was it only clicked within her mm-hmm. at that moment when she was like i guess standing face to face with death and also i think when john was there and then that's when she made that like she had that whole big epiphany that oh wait I think I've always loved death like death has always been there death has always been in my life from the beginning until the end yeah because one of the things we did not mention is that um, to find her one true love she goes to a witch of sorts and this witch gives her an eye a magic eye and the witch says oh your soulmate you will have like a pure love with him you will have a passionate love with him and so she she gives her um, this eye that when it stops moving she will have found her soulmate yeah and so katura during the story goes around her village and like goes to Squeeze see all the eligible eye. the eligible bachelors and like old holding the eye trying to figure out if you know they're her soulmate and they're not and she kind of becomes really desperate and so at the very end um she and and one thing i thought was really interesting is that and kind of made me think maybe she knew all along is that whenever she meets with Lord Death, she, she doesn't, doesn't touch the, the eye. eye. Exactly. I was picking that up too. And I was like, but why aren't like, is he not an option for you? Like, why are you not touching the eye? And then I think that's a valid point. I think she just didn't want to admit it or she, yeah, her subconscious didn't want her to, you know, didn't allow her for, you know, allow for her to believe that that could be her one true love. But can I just say that, the eye was creeping me out. Oh, yeah. But it was, it was so disgusting. cool. I've never, like, I just, I, I remember reading that part in the book and thinking that is so wise. Like, that's so cool to, like, who who would have thought of just adding an eye and when it stops moving, there you go. That's your one true love. Which being the eye is, like, a symbol in itself because eye, exactly. sight, knowing, yeah. like, coming to terms with your reality yeah. type. Like, um what's his name the the one greek god that like was blinded oedipus oedipus isn't it oedipus oedipus um he, he was he was he blinded himself because he was blind to his own fate and he oh, right. married yes. his mother killed his father not knowing that they were yeah yeah although so, he wasn't a god he was just like a like a a human right like he wasn't no he was a god really yeah and i think because of that, like, sight and eyes have, like, big, si- are symbols of this knowing your true self, knowing your fate, embracing it, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Like, so I thought it was pretty wise that it was an eye. Um, no, I, I did like that idea of the eye because, yeah, exactly as you said, it was her, you know, searching for her fate. Yeah, because at the end, when she meets up with Lord Death, uh, there's a paragraph that says, um, the eye was still as death, but I did not need the charm to understand the magic that was in my own heart. Mm-hmm. I think this girl knew all along. I think so, too. I mean, like, who wouldn't be in love with death? Like, I, we're talking about Lord Death. He's hot. Can we talk he... about this? How she describes him, this is where... Folks, I was like, how is this a book for kids? Because how she describes him is, like, very sexually coded. Like, it's it, there's sexual tension in this book. This the oh. dialogue's hot. They, oh my, God, I know. I was in love. I was, as soon as he, like, walked, like, and bent down and we saw his, mm-hmm. like, his thigh. His powerful thighs. His, yes. And then he's Girl. wearing his, you know, black leather gloves. And I was just, I was smitten. I was taken. I... Katoria, yeah. if you weren't going to have him, give him to me, you know? I know, and I love how <laughs> at the beginning, um, his, like, stillness, because she talks about the stillness and cleanness of him mm-hmm. a lot, and, and she, in contrast to her own mortality. And so she, she's dying. She's constantly exactly. dying in her she own died, body. Every, humans die every day. Like, people mm-hmm. die. We're dying right now as we speak. <laughs> as we speak, literally. Um, and I just thought that was interesting how in the beginning, the stillness and cleanness is, like, is something to fear. But by the end, she says it's comforting. Exactly. The stillness 
promise of Lord Death is comforting to her. Yeah, I don't. I just felt like this book was just so good, and even down to the names. I think um, that also brings in the whole fairy tale aspect. Um, with sore lily it's a play on the word sore like as in like i have a sore Mm. and it's just you know she's like i think um katora talked about her limping and like walking with like the world of pains Mm. and then we have like i also thought it was really interesting that the um the men that her friends ended up with didn't really have names like the tailor and choir master they were just friends can we talk about that like female friends this book we should have said this book came out in i think it was 2006 so 2006 and we get an awesome female friendship that's not at all based on jealousy or wanting to best the other or wanting it was very much like they wanted each other to be happy exactly it was so sweet it was so important to Keturah to make sure Mm -hmm. her friends had happiness that it's one of the things that she asks Lord Death in the end she says I make sure my friends have their happy ending and I love that, like, I know we're jumping. We shouldn't be jumping. Yeah. <laughs> so let's let's not. But <laughs> I'll, I'll bring it up later. But no, honestly, from the beginning, when she comes back to the village and she's she tells her friends, listen, guys, I spoke with death mm-hmm. and I need to go back to him the next night because, you know, I made this deal with him. And they were so supportive. They just looked at her and were like, all right, what do we need to do to n- make you not die? What is it that we need to do? Let's find you a man. Let's find you your true love. That's it. And I just, I love that support and friendships. And I think it was so, like, it was, like, I don't know. I just loved it. I loved everything about their friendship. For, like, such an old book, I really expected the jealous friend that's not really a friend, you know? Yeah. I'm trying to remember. I don't think back in the day I've read, back in the day, I'm talking like I'm, you know, ancient but I mean like mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember the books that I've read before um I feel like a lot of books like young adult books do have strong female friendships even you know in the early 2000s but I feel like this one was done in such a real way that I felt like wait this could be me and my friends with how supportive they are and like yeah they have you know some differences and some issues but at the same time at the end of the day they have each other's back I don't know yeah there were female friendships but I'm trying to think of the books that came out in like the two like 2010 around that period like twilight the selection Mm. the hunger games and i think there were female friendships but i don't think they were important to the plot as much as it is in this one this book yeah Um, and as profound like she truly cares about them and they truly care about her whereas i think in some of those books it's this side thing that's not as important and I wouldn't be I mean would you say that Bella would die for um I don't even know like who are her friends <laughs> Bella didn't have friends besides the Cullens she well, and she Jacob had, she, she had that um the, the humans like the were the, they really her friends though I mean we could well, do a whole podcast exactly on no, Twilight that's exactly it like that's exactly it Bella did not have friends yeah but I will say um Vampire Academy it was centered on female friendship the whole purpose of that yeah. book Okay. series was you know female friendship and I just checked it came out in 2007 so it was around the same time so that one was a book where female friendship was the focal point but as I said I like the support between Greta Beatrice and Katora. I thought it was really well done I think I I, th- I feel like we should talk about being the bride of death mm-hmm. and the appeal in that <laughs> because I, <laughs> because I'm very passionate about it <laughs> Um, but I okay so part of why I had such a strong reaction to this tale and we kind of touched upon this it, it spoke to me not like in a profound way not as a kid but as a woman yeah and I think there's something especially appealing in discovering you're not the soulmate of some prince like in the fairy tales but rather mm-hmm. you're the bride of death and you know you think of um death and the maiden the the death and the maiden trope or hades mm-hmm. and persephone like it is um it's it's there's a reason why women uh react so strongly to those types of stories hades and persephone is often one of the you know favorite uh myth of women you know exactly and you think well why and i think there's an appeal in becoming queen of the underworld or queen of uh, the death realm um and ruling over it lord death even said she would be queen of his realm and 
Yeah. It's like Hades and Persephone. She became queen of the underworld. Yeah, and it's clearly, it's not I am ruling over it and you're just by my side. It's you are ruling it with me. We're equals. It's it's like Hades and Persephone. Persephone does get kidnapped. So a lot of the Hades and Persephone retellings nowadays are about giving Persephone back her agency. But it's not mm -hmm. about giving her power because Persephone has power in the myth. To begin exactly. with, she's very powerful. She's equal to Hades, and he knows that, and he's fine with it. Like, it's not a problem. And so I yeah. think... Yeah. No, I think it also comes... It just comes down to what you said. I think in death, we're equals no matter what. We're all the same in death, but I also feel like whenever we have Hades or Lord Death or any trope where there is, you know, that Lord of Death or Lord of Darkness, they treat their mate as their equal. And I feel like that's why a lot of women or a lot of other people... Um, you know, gravitate toward, towards this trope because it's just mm -hmm. such a, I don't know, it's not, I don't know how to explain it, but it's just, yeah, it's all about equality and it's all, all about treating your mate as your partner, as your equal. Yeah, I think it's also because, and the book sort of touches upon the power of death and how his gift is life and how yes. it's a gift that death allows you to live another day. And yes. so that's a big theme in the book. It comes back time and time again. Keturah constantly, you know, begs, for lack of a better word, death to not take people from her village, to yeah. stop the plague, to stop this mother and the child from dying, to stop yeah. the, the, the child of the witch to, from dying. Um, and so I think the, uh, the appeal comes from there, perhaps because we can't control death. Yeah. It's the like it's the single most inevitable thing that will happen to a mortal. You'll mm -hmm. die. Exactly. There, nothing ha is more powerful than that to us. We fear nothing more. And so in these tales, I think that becoming the bride of death gives you, I mean, the ultimate power. You rule. You're so powerful that you rule along with death, and you're. I agree. His immortal bride. Exactly, and I think. Um, when you touched upon um, humans and humanity fearing death, I think that brings us to our monster of the story. And I think, well, mm -hmm. at least in my head, in my opinion, I think the monster is our fear of death and our fear of, you know, the unknown. And I think, you know, while death, sure, like, I guess, quote unquote, he can be the monster, but I don't think he is the monster. As you said, he makes you appreciate life. Death makes you appreciate life. And I love that he was like a personification of what death is. And... Mm -hmm our fear of what we don't know about and our fear of like the pain of death is the monster in my eyes. And her and the villagers start thinking of her as a fellow monster because mm -hmm. death is a monster to them. Keturah doesn't yeah. see, Keturah never sees him as a monster, which is really interesting because he asks her when he realizes that she's seen him her whole life, he says, you were never afraid of me. And she says, no, I just thought you were some rich dude that, you know, came sometimes to the village. You know, she doesn't think of him mm -hmm. as something to fear. No, and sorry, I have a quote from the beginning, and it was just her, as when Laura Death asked her, you know, what it is like, I think it was like, what is her, you know, her experiences with death? And she says, I am brave, sir. I have had much, much practice. I was born into death. My grandmother has told me many times. And then she continues on. Um, I have been in conversation with you perhaps all my life. Yeah. And I think that's a big indication of, you know, where the story was going and also how close all of us are to death. I we think. all const There's a whole paragraph about how death constantly follows us because death says they fear me, um, but they don't think ab about me or something along those lines. And, mm -hmm. and Katura has like a long paragraph that's really good and I probably should read it but um about <laughs> about how she says no if you think they don't think about you you're fooling yourself exactly. when it's winter and it's cold and our fingers start to go numb we think about you when we when our bellies start to you know be empty we think about you because we're starving and and she lists all those things that yes you know the experience is, as mortals and are constantly aware that death is right there because he thinks no they think i'm so far away no yeah i just felt like the, this book was so rich and just so like it's full of like life lessons and morals and mm -hmm. all of that like all of that stuff once you dig deeper as you said the subtext is so 
rich and it's just so like ever present and I just I thought it was just so so amazing like Mm -hmm. so well written so in literature death is often coded in um, eroticism so like just think of just think of the expression la petite mal which is the little death which is literally what you call an orgasm (laughs) from from there death and and sex are essentially linked so yeah. I was thinking about that and well I was wondering if that's also part of the appeal because you know as women we're constantly we're told you can't wear this you can't do that you can't say that you can't go there alone um and the list goes on so a, a woman's desire and sexuality is often still seen as a negative thing as something yes. you shouldn't show you shouldn't talk about you should you know you shouldn't um, exposed to people and so it's something to hide that's such um, a good point I think part of why this is given the, the woman power is because you're 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 you know you're given agency and power in being awakened to your sexual power essentially you're mm-hmm. you're awakened to it and you you understand that you can use it to your advantage and so you know, what's more powerful than a woman who knows that and knows how to use it, you know? And mm-hmm. that's exactly what happens with Katura. Like, she's... Lord Death keeps telling her, oh, I can't do that. Because she keeps asking for things that are so big. And, yes. and he says, I can't do that. And she says, no, you can't. You will do it for me. <laughs> she She's fully aware of her power as a woman. And as a exactly. woman that he and- loves. Exactly. And I feel like that also comes down to the kiss, that big, amazing, beautiful, epic kiss. Well, there was more than one. There was three kisses. Oh, they, like, there were one a of lot. Them is yeah, like she especially. kept kissing him. She kept kissing him. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess I loved, I loved that scene so much because you knew how much he ached for that love, that acceptance yeah. and just that affection. Mm-hmm. And ugh. yeah, this, this don't even get me this started. This power, this power as an awakened woman comes into play in the book when he's he he so she wants him is it the plague i think it's it's with the plague she asks yes. him to stop the plague because yes, Katura and who brought the plague Katura brought the Katura. plague and i th- oh yes. this is this is another thing i thought was interesting because you know how the fruit lemon have like yes. plays such a big part of this book and yes. i i kind of thought like is this like a nod to Hades and Persephone and like the pomegranate. I thought you were going to say um that like it was like um a nod to the forbidden fruit with Adam and Eve. I mean, is it not? Like Hades and it, Persephone, it's kind of that too. It's it's you, exactly you want the fruit, you take the fruit and there's a consequence with it. And Katura wanted the lemon, she brought the lemon, but she brought the plague. Yes. You know? And so anyway, so she she asks him to stop the plague and Um, she says, I'll give you something. And she knows what she can give him. (laughs) She does. (laughs) She knows what she can give him to make him do it. And she does. She kisses him. She's like, I can use this because I know you want it. So I'll give it to you. But you'll do this for me in return. But I also, as soon as after she kissed him, she says she has control over him. So is that, did she think um, because she kissed him, she can control him? Or is it because she knows of his affection for her that if she kisses him, she has the ability to convince him to do things. Or did she actually think she had the power over him? I think it's she knows that she can use his love for... To help her? Yeah. Okay. I think okay. so. Lord Death, in the end, like, he does everything for her. He does everything for her. It starts with one day and it ends with like what four days later. Like he's given her four days, but not just that. He's he's like stopped he's so multiple deaths from happening. Like he is this boy is in love, right? As you find the kiss, I want to read this one quote when she's trying to convince him <clears throat> to heal people of the plague. If untimely death came only to those who deserve it, who deserve that fate, Katura. Where would choice be? No one would do good for its own sake, but only to avoid an early demise. No one would speak out against evil because of his own courageous soul, but only to live another day. The right to choose is man's great gift, but one thing is not his to choose, the time and means of death. 
I love that quote. I loved it too. That was literally a favorite quote. I I loved it. Because I just felt like it's so true. Like it's just, it's just. It goes back to what I was saying with, uh, you know, death's greatest gift is life. Exactly. And I think if you, if you just, anyways, reread the kiss because I just, I'm thinking too many thoughts Can I just read this though? He says, um... I'm not quite sure. It comes right after the quote we just read, but it says, he says, um, Kitura, don't you know your soul is mine? Not a man on this earth, no king, no wise man is greater than I. Every one of them humbles himself bef- before me one day. Yet you, Kitura, a peasant girl, bargain with me, rob me, and ask greater and greater favors of me, all the while saying you will marry for love. What do you say to this? And then later on, she says, I love you. And then she wants to marry him. (laughs) I know. Uh, Oh, yeah, because this is this is this is where uh, this is after after this, they have the kiss. Because she says, I'll give you something precious. Mm -hmm. I absolutely I just loved it. I felt like like how it all tied together because we were talking about the plague since like the first chapter the plague was coming the plague was coming and then you realize the plague only came because Katora needed to find her true love and to find her true love she needed to enter this you know the fair with the best cook you know she needed to make the best pie that she could ever make and she needed the lemons to make that best pie but with the lemons became came the plague and how everything just tied together was just it was literally what a fairy tale was and I felt like every little nod and every little motif was just it was important Mm -hmm. and there's there's another part I just love and this is more like I love the writing here um it's just before she kisses him it says dark shadows left around him there is nothing you could give me he said with great dignity I stepped closer to him I traveled a hundred miles in that single step in a stride, my village was so far away, I could scarcely remember it. It would be a journey of a thousand days to return. Can I have That's kisses just, like that? <laughs> right? And can I just say, can I just say, I love that the story started with her um, following the heart. Like, I know it was supposed to be like a... What, what do you think was this? What, what do you think it symbolizes the heart? Like, it's her, she was following her own heart. Her heart was in the forest. Her, her heart was Lord Death. Oh my God. That's You're why I so thought it was right. really interesting that they didn't call him like call the, you know, reindeer a reindeer. They called him a heart because yeah. her heart and it's it's the heart the and his mate. Yes, it, it says the yes. heart and his mate, and people hunt them, and that works with how Katura sort of begin like starts talking to Lord Death, and her then the villagers start hating her. Well, not hating her, but you know they yeah fear her for it, mm-hmm. and so it's it's. Yeah, it's reminiscent of the heart that's being hunted, like the heart and his mate that they're being hunted. Oh my god, this is so yeah. good! It was so <laughs> I, good, and I, I, I think it's think also really that. interesting. Um, we only ever see um, John, mm-hmm. which is the Lord's son, we only ever see him with um, the mate. We never like we never see him with both of them together, you know. I think it's really interesting, and then we only see the I think we see the heart and the mate together when we're with Lord Death and. Katora. And I think that's also telling of who the mates are. <laughs> and I just, I don't know, I love good storytelling, Marge. I want to read another part. There's just so much to Okay, go, read another books. part. Um, okay, so this is where, um, so she goes, to, it's like the last scene. She goes to the forest again. John is there. Uh, Lord Death has this amazing quote about, how, like, John says, uh, like I don't want to go to hell or you're go back to hell or something like that and and Mm -hmm. Lord Death says um there is no hell hell is just the landscape landscape of a man's soul or whatever like a man just sees the landscape of his own soul I was like cool Mm. that's a great line (laughs) um anyways and essentially by that point Lord Death is about to tell Katura that the, the their bargain is like off like it's, it's he wants her to live okay he doesn't want her to die yeah um, oh yes 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 he searched my face touched it gently with fingers so cold they burned along my jaw my temple <laughs> my lips burned me to my very core but oh. but to know that is never enough katura i have abdicated my claim upon your soul come i must take you home do you not know 
you have defeated me, that you <laughs> have tricked my heart into loving you. <laughs> Do what you will, marry whom you will, go where you will. You shall live to be a great age, and you shall not see me again until life has pressed its, its hand so heavily upon you that you wish to see it lift. Wow. Can we just, like, also talk about, like, the way that he used the word abdicated, like he's abdicating her soul? Mm -hmm. It's like he already sees her for the queen that she is. She already yeah. is the queen of his heart. And it's just, I just, I need a Lord Death in my life, okay? It's all same. <laughs> Girl, same. <sighs> but you have tricked my heart into loving you. I just think you have defeated me. Like, I... <sighs> he's like, you know, he's like Darcy... Lord, you know, you know, Fitzwilliam Darcy of death, okay? He, he is. That that line reminds me of Darcy so much. Yes. <sighs> I don't know. I just think this book was just so, like, like, it was filled of such beautiful language and prose. And just, it was just the storytelling was so well done. And I, I love Katora's stories because even I was enthralled by them. I was like, I need to know the ending of them. But mm -hmm. we never got the endings, you know? <laughs> I mean, we did later on. But I mean... Um, yeah, and I hate that I'm good. I actually am not gonna read another quote yet, but I kind of want to because Go it ahead. makes you, it just makes you ache for Lord Death and his loneliness and his pain. Oh, is it the part so where she, she, she tells him the story of Lord Death? Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> I love that quote. It's so long, but so worth it. No, I'm only gonna read a little piece of it. No, read all of it. I don't have all of it. Okay, read, read whatever part you have. Okay, so his oh, secret was, so <laughs> his secret was, that, though, he was death and beyond all wanting, yet he wanted something, yearned and mourned and raged in his heart for something as only as an immortal being can. And what was it that Lord Death wanted and wept in his heart for? A love of his own, a consort, a companion <laughs> who would comfort his heart when it broke from the sadness of his errands, who would weep with him when he carried home little ones in his arms who would greet him with a joy equal to the terror with which mortals greeted him. Above all, he wished for a wife into whom he would pour his passion. Can we just, he would pour his passion. If that's passion. Sexual, I don't wink, know what it wink, is. Wink, nudge, nudge. Like, I mean, maybe I'm just, I don't know. Maybe that's just my adult dirty mind, but. Yeah, I think of both of our dirty minds because my, my mind went exactly where your mind went. <sighs> And he doesn't like it. He doesn't like that she's saying all this because it's right. It's true. She's hitting it on the nose. Oh, she, girl. Yes, she is. Our boy is lonely. I think at that point, if you didn't know that she was already in love with him, then, like, I don't even know. She just knows exactly what he needs. And I, she was in love with him since then. <laughs> like, I mean, since before then. But I feel like that's when the readers got to experience it firsthand if you, you know, mm -hmm. if you would have picked up on that. But... No, I just thought it was just that really hurt my soul to read something like that because you realize how lonely he was and how much he yearned for that mate. Yeah, and I think in relation to that, the rest of the of the quote, well, a little bit later on, she she yeah. says, um, and so he did his because she says, who would want to marry yeah. such a man? And so then she says, and so he did his endless work without feeling, without pity, without rest for to open his heart to these would be to open his heart to his loneliness and longing. And that was yeah. beyond bearing. I know. And then the, he says, there are some who come willingly. And she says, there are, there were some who came willingly, not out of love, but out of sickness and sadness and a lack of understanding. He wanted none of them. And so he waited without waiting and dreamt, and dreamt of what he could not imagine and performed his terrible work and lived only in the moments out of which eternity is spun knowing it was hopeless this book guys is so beautiful it's just so good i cannot i cannot <sighs> I, I i kind of want a sequel but i just need a sequel for them i just need to know what's like okay should we get into the ending yeah i think let's get down to it but i also wanted to say i don't like i also feel like a sequel um shouldn't obviously happen which it probably won't but i think it's because the whole mis i guess the mystery surrounding death mm -hmm. you know will never be solved because we don't know what death is like in the end mm -hmm. and i think you know having a sequel would just you know take away that mystery and i i think it was all due in part we only saw them get on that horse and leave at the end of it um 
because we don't know what lies after death. Now let's get into the end. <laughs> yeah, I just want to read beforehand a, a short quote from a book that I read not long ago, which is called uh, The Uses of Enchantment, the Meaning and Importance of Fairy Tales by mm-hmm. Bruno Bettelheim. Bettelheim, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right. Um, and he talks in it about the uses of the happy ever after ending. Um, and so he says, for example, fairy tales pose the dilemma of wishing to live eternally by occasionally concluding if they have not died they are still alive the other ending and they lived happily ever after does not for a moment fool the child that eternal life is possible but it does indicate that which alone can take the sting out of the narrow limits of our time on this earth forming a truly satisfying bond to another the tale teach that when one has done this one has reached the ultimate um, in emotional security of existence and permanence of relation available to men. And this alone can dissipate the fear of death. Which I think is an interesting quote in relation mm-hmm. to a book in which this woman's soulmate is death. Exactly. And the book ends in her death. And so it's kind of like, I, I, I want to talk about how, does it conform to what this is saying or is it going against it because this is her happy ending and yet we know she's dead I mean yes what did you think of that okay it's hard to okay I looked at it as in yes he is death personified he is literally personifying death and she goes willingly to death and I also I don't I don't I don't know how I feel about that but at the same time it's her soulmate like Lord death is her like her soulmate her better half her you know, her her mate. And it's just her going to him willingly was a beauty to read. But at the same time, she's going willingly to death. So I, I think I think some would find it morbid. But I think it's doing the opposite. It's it's hopeful. It's a happy ending for Katura. And so I think it's kind of going it's kind of going the same route as what this book is saying in the sense that fairy tales teach you not to fear death. Because if you have formed a meaningful connection with someone else, then you don't need to fear death. You've mm-hmm. you've achieved something that's greater than that. And mm. I, I think this is exactly it. You know, in the beginning of the book, she doesn't want to die. But by the end, she goes willingly. And it's yeah. not morbid. It's a choice. She's This is her happy ending. She has reached that point where death no longer is something to fear. It's something to love. It's because she she embraces who yeah you know her soulmate is she embraces who she is she embraces what her destiny is and I think I loved um the part where she has that revelation that the ever presence of death made her love life much more and I feel like Mm -hmm. you know death in itself makes you appreciate life and I just like I love that whole revelation that she had that way he's been with me since the beginning since I was born, you know, her mom died of childbirth, her dad followed soon after, her grandfather also died, and she had people dying in the villages, I mean, sorry, in the village um, that were her friends and, like, people that she knew, and I, death has always been with her, and also Lord Death, you know, since he's the one taking the souls away, he's been with her, like, <laughs> and I just loved it. And I don't know if I'm looking too far into this, but you were you were saying, like, oh, it makes you appreciate life. More. Yeah. And I, I, I wonder if this kind of played into why she chose the lemon as a fruit, because I mean, nothing makes you more certain that you're alive than eating a lemon, right? Like, Something. And she did remark upon how sour it was. And it was when she was feeling weak and looking pale and like not being able to, you know, get out of bed or whatever. She tasted that lemon and she's like, ooh, that was sour. And as you said, yeah. it does make you, you know, Feel really alive. <laughs> experience life <laughs> um okay i one last quote for me maybe this is this the same quote that i'm probably gonna want to read <laughs> i don't know so in the very 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 beginning when oh, okay. Kit- no my quote is at the end the very very <laughs> end the last page but in the very very beginning when she's talking to lord death and saying here's what i wish i would have done with my life or what i wish i had um she talks about wanting a house a wedding Mm -hmm. a husband babies and then it comes full circle because at the end yeah at the end (laughs) okay don't be breaking out into tears march (laughs) i just this is probably my favorite quote of the whole book Um, okay i mean it's not really a quote it's literally a whole page oh gosh um (laughs) 
<laughs> but essentially, uh, is it a dower? It's a dower. Yeah, it's okay. a dower. So essentially, she says, no, I'll come with you. I, I want to come with you. I want to marry you. I want to become your bride. Yeah. And he said, and she says, they will find my body. I said, for I will go with you. He says, you have no dower. Live, Katura, Go home. But I, I do have a dower. I said plainly. This is my dower, Lord Death. The crown of flowers I will never wear at my wedding. I could not stop the tears that filled my eyes. He knelt at, on one knee before me. He's yes. literally proposing. He's proposing as she's, yeah, renouncing her life, her dreams. She's, then she says, the little house I would have had of my own to furnish and clean. That too is part of my dower. I will give you the world for your footstool, he oh. said. And most, and this is the line. This is the line that gets me every time. She says, oh, yes. And most precious of all, I give you the baby I will never hold in my arms. Yeah. And that is, like, if you've read the book and seen how many times she mentioned, she mentions wanting kids. And then ultimately she says, this is part of my dower. Like, I, I, I give you this, the, the, the child I'll never have. Like, this is my gift to you. And you also, um, you didn't read, like, his, like, reaction. He, like, goes and embraces her and he's cries oh, with yeah. her he mourns with her yes um for the life that she is giving up yeah yeah it's just like it's so telling because while we fear death death also experiences so much pain and loss and experiences your pain and your loss the second to last line is at last i laid down my sadness laid it on the forest floor never to have it again she's happy now she she no longer is sad and and so is he you know he's no longer sad either exactly because he has that (sighs) mate to share the rest of his existence with and i think it's just the way it ended was so well done and i also like um the coda i guess the epilogue um of we like we're getting updates of Mm. like they're her friends and her family is happy ever after. It's like, where did they end up? And I loved how it was also death played a huge part in them experiencing their happiness. And he made sure that all of them lived a good life. Giving him joy. Giving him joy because he feels like he constantly brings sadness to people. Exactly. Which is such a weight on him. But for once, because of Keturah, he actually brought joy to these people. Because as you like, I think as Keturah said, she he had locked away all of his emotions because it was unbearable for him. He couldn't experience an existence alone. But now that he has that other half, that that person that will help him through these things times through you know taking loved ones away from other people from like taking babies that you know didn't live a full life like he's had he has that mate to help him get through that and I it helps him experiencing like experience the positive emotions as well the joy the love the affection the happiness alongside the sadness the terror the horror all of that but anyways time to uh, ask our you know our questions that we always ask would you be able to survive in the village? What is it called? Rude by what is it? Sorry, how do you how do you say it? Oh, is it tied tied tied, tied by rude? Tied by rude. Tied by rude. What a weird name. I was trying to figure out if there's a deeper meaning to it, tied but I couldn't. Rude. I couldn't figure out. What the does play by rude, rude mean? I'm not even sure I know what it means. Rude. Tied by rude, unless it's a play on the word rude, as in like people are rude because it's R O O D. Rude. Oh my god, a rude is a crucifix, especially one positioned above a, the rude screen of a church, tied by rude. They're tied to death, essentially. Oh. Or, or, I mean, the crucifix is like, it's not necessarily death, but like, punish- like well, I mean, yes, it is death, but like, you know what I mean? Like, a, pun- like people die by the cross, like the crucifix. Y- yeah, but like, for reasons. You know, because they've sinned or whatever, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. That was that was Jesus paying for his crime or whatever. I don't, yeah, I'm not a, his I'm sin. not a pro of at the Bible. Our, I, don't, our I don't know the Bible. But tied by rude. Interesting. Interesting. Name. Names have meaning. So would you survive? Are you asking me? Heck no. Are you kidding? The plague was coming. <laughs> Girl, but you, okay, you get to fall in love with Lord Death. Okay, but if I was Katora, sure. I would want Lord Death. I would want to be Katora. I would want to switch places with Katora if I could get Lord Death. Girl, I would die in a heartbeat to be with him. <laughs> this is so morbid. Imagine yeah, our listeners right now listening to this. But yeah, we would die to be with Lord Death. A girl, no, I would. No, don't do that, folks, okay? Um, no, um, but if, 
if I were to just live in that world, but like not be Katora, I don't think I could live in that world. I mean, it's a, it's uh, okay. Yes, sure, the plague. That's one thing. But Katora brings the plague. So if Katora is not there, then the plague doesn't come. True. So overall, it's just a cute little quaint village. I sort of pictured it as like medieval esque. No, I think it is medieval esque. I think it's, I think it's uh, the Black Plague. I think was coming. I think he might have stopped that bout of the plague, but who's to say that another, you know, another foreigner would not come into the village with the plague, you know? Like, so at the, at the same time, I kind of want a working toilet, you know, running water, um, be able to survive because I probably would be the peasant poor person in, like, you know, that area. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, for me, I kind of pictured it as a medieval type quaint little village. And mm-hmm. I've been reading so much medieval-esque romance lately that I'm I feel like I would fit right in I feel like this is my place this is where I was but also you need to keep in mind it's not the richest village (laughs) like the it's not that they're happy those people are happy everyone's friends with each other they have little parties there's John if I can't get if I can't get uh Lord Death I'd be happy with John he was a he was a good guy he was a good guy. I did like John, and I like that he never feared Katora. Yeah. And he was always by her side. I liked John. Can we talk about John for a second? Yeah, sure. Loved he was John. a great... I mean, I mean, at the end, he thought his, his love was, you know, choosing death over him, which she did. But at the same time... She sure did. <laughs> <laughs> in every sense of the word, not just her mate, but also the action of dying. She chose that over mm-hmm. John. But I just thought, yeah, he was a great guy. You know, him releasing the heart's mate was just really telling of the person he is. And, yeah, mm-hmm. I just thought he was great. That's all I really wanted to say about John. <laughs> he was just, he, no, he was great. He was great. I, I I remember the first time I read the book, I was sort of doing a um, reading thread. Yeah. Yes, I remember that famous reading thread. Yeah, I was rereading that, and one of my one of my tweets was, "John is a good boy. <laughs> he he is the I definition like of good boy. <laughs> he could have been, you know how sometimes you have like you have the side guy character that turns out he's really ugly inside, and he's just pretending to be good to get the girl. Mm-hmm. John was not that, and I appreciate it. I really yes." Exactly. I really appreciate the direction the author went in terms of her side characters. As mm-hmm. we said, the f- female friendship and also the second love interest went, you know, the way I wanted it to go. It didn't go the way I thought it was going to go, but I liked that he ended up being a good guy and he lived a full life with his wife that he grew to love and realized that that was his true love, you know? I love, I love the part where I think it's one of the last uh guys that she tries the eye with and oh the she's hermit really she's really not attracted to that guy the hermit. And she puts her hand on the on the eye and she's like he it rolled so hard <laughs> and then she's like thank <laughs> god and then also when she was convinced that it was going to be ben yeah like, um and then the eye started weeping oh, no, no no it was with john the eye started weeping right no 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 one of them i don't remember who i think it might have been ben but anyways, it started weeping, and it was just like it's just an eyeball. How's the eyeball weeping? And it well, was I so. I think it's. I think it's because it, I think the eye is evocative of what Katura is feeling herself, and yes. she wanted it to be Ben. She was really set on it being Ben, and then she finds out he's not. And yeah. I think the eye wep- weps because of that, and then no. the eye rolls really hard for that guy that she doesn't want because she really doesn't want him. <laughs> the eye was emoting the emotions that exactly. she herself was not yeah. allowing. Her- herself to feel mm-hmm. uh, but I still thought it was gross that it was crying and she had to deal with like wet wet yeah. tear water <laughs> <laughs> like, it was so gross I mean I'm, you- I'm I'm down with your idea of petitioning I mean you didn't say that but let's petition for a sequel <laughs> I want to I want to know what's going on in the death realm I I would I would live you know to read that there's a great part I'm sorry, I keep saying that. But, like, there's a, there's multiple great parts in this book, let's be real. This, but, um, bo- this book was full of such quotable quotes. The that whole book is quotable. The whole book is a great quote. <laughs> yeah, but I, I won't find it. But it's, it's, she just says, like, 
uh, that her heart is capable of so much love, but like her soul too, or something like that. Mm. That that the the love of her soul is even greater than the love of her heart. Mm. And I think that was sort of um, because she dies, and so her yeah. heart is no more, but her soul lives on, and that's what yes lives on with or yeah. death. It's her soul, and I don't know. I thought that was pretty neat. Sorry, this um brings me back to my absolute favorite quote. Oh, okay, go ahead. I'm ready. I said that about every quote that I, you know, decided to talk about. But anyways, so this is like the quote that I'm choosing not to end with, but to, you know, this is just the mm-hmm. last quote I think I'll bring about. Okay, so this is Katora to Lord Death. I believe it. Yeah, it was Lord Death. How can I explain that many times in my life, Lord Death had walked with me and he was inevitably a part of my life, intimate, bargain or no, and that he had always been and must always be my companion, my soul and heart love. Ah. So I don't think it was to Lord Death, but I think, (sighs) as you said, you know, she wasn't just loving with her heart. She was loving with her soul because it is believed that the soul is the undying part of you, the this part that never, you know, that always lives on. And I think it's just so telling that Lord Death not only was the like the love of her heart, but a, he was the love of her soul as well. Do you do you remember the part in the very beginning? I, that always strikes me so like I don't know. It's just such a weird thing. He puts her. He puts his hand on her cheek. I think her her chin. Her chin. Her chin. And she's like, "Why did you touch me?" And he's like, "That's not for you to know." Every time I'm like, can you tell me he that? He just wanted her. He, like, he just wanted to ch- touch her. Okay, Marge, I'm going to say something that's not very young adult like. I need some intense, hot fan fiction. Sex. I need sex. I need sex. <laughs> Same. I, I did not believe you when you said that um, you could, like, the sexual tension was so prominent. Like, you could cut this tension with, like, a butter a knife. knife. It was. It's. And it, I just, I wonder, I, I just wonder if a kid reading this would see that or not. I don't, you know what? I don't even, I don't know. Girl, she, she's like noticing his powerful, thick thighs, his yes. loved hands. Like my hand porn fetish was through the roof with this book. I was freaking out. I was hyperventilating. I was like, is this chapter one? <gasps> yeah, she keeps like, describing him as like a king, so regal, so mm-hmm. like she had the hots for him and I Who wouldn't though? Her. He sounded so hot. He did. He really freaking did. And I need them to bang because the dialogue, <laughs> the back and forth between them was just so good. Like it's not for you to know. <laughs> yeah and like can we talk about how smooth he was too i don't know when they were talking about the heart and then um he said because said a voice behind me he is so gloriously beautiful like you <laughs> like my boy lord death was smooth af he it and he does that twice in the book there's another moment where she notices something pretty or whatever and oh no he says you're even prettier by the day or something like that at some point <sighs> why is he so smooth marge of course why he is of course he is he does something so human at some point <laughs> and i just thought that was funny he runs his hand through his hair and i'm pretty sure it was luscious locks <laughs> I imagined Adam Driver. Let's not kid ourselves. Adam Driver is Lord Death, period, full stop. Yeah, if they ever make this into a film, yeah. Adam Driver and those luscious locks with those luscious lips and those luscious thighs. And Okay, anyways, this is turning into something else. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, okay. Here's another one where it's like, are you going to tell me this is not sexual in any way? Okay, tell me. Um, it says, I turned to see Lord Death, and even in the dark, I could tell that his hi- his eyes were upon me as if he had forever to consider me. Ooh, he was checking her out as hard. As if he had forever to consider me. I'm just, I'm just imagining his eyes, like, running up and down slowly and, like, really checking out his, you know, his queen of the underworld. I have such a kink for, like, holding the chin. And he does me it a too. couple times in this book. Oh my gosh, me too. And I love the way he did it too. Like, I'm pretty sure he bent down 
and like lifted yeah. her chin up because he was so much taller than her. Mm-hmm. It was hot. This book, I did not expect the heat to be this high. But Katura is only 16. I know, I know. But I That's think the- at the same time, I think he even said at the beginning, you're t- like, you're too young. You're not, like, you can't be my mate. Um, like, you can't be my wife, sorry. And then um, as the story progresses, you realize, yeah, one, that she grows into herself. She becomes a woman. But also, two, I think her life experiences and her ability to tell stories and her imagination makes her older beyond her years as well. Yeah. No, you, you can tell that the, the at the beginning she's very, well, not childlike, but, you know, like a teenager. Yeah. She's she's not ready to die. And then by the end, she's, she, she reads like a woman. Like, she doesn't read like a child yeah. anymore. It is such a short book and yet I find that it does so much in so few words I agree and this is testament to like great writing I mean this book was a national book award fi- uh, finalist and so it's amazing writing it's amazing writing when you have amazing writing you can say a lot in very few words and yes. the message comes across so clearly <sighs> I highly recommend this book to anyone and everyone. If that wasn't clear enough yet. <laughs> I know, right? I feel like this whole podcast has just been us, like, gushing and, like, lamenting about how amazing this book was. But, no, honestly, read these, read, like, read this book, guys. Like, and, and, and it's not just for kids, you know? No. Like, this, this proved that, too. Like, as adults, we were able to fully enjoy this book. Yeah, you know, we are grown women, kids. and we, I literally just read this. I think, Marge, you read this last year. Yeah. And I, I love it. I think it's going to be one of my favorites of all time. So thank you, March. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> I, I just, I've been screaming about this book for months. <laughs> so f- finally, at last, I have succeeded. You have. I feel like on your Twitter, it's always been like daily announcement. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. At last, I've succeeded. But as, as I was re, like, I was rereading parts of it for, for this. Um, and I was just, I, I was just falling right back into it. Just mm-hmm. like that. Just super easily just rereading the whole thing. So, mm-hmm. oh, just read it. Just read yeah, it and just... then let us know if you did, if you did, because I will yeah. need to know. I'm with you now, Marge. I think everyone needs to read this book and they just need to read it. All right. That's it. Everyone needs to read it. That's how we're ending this podcast today. <laughs> yeah. As, as my Twitter, uh, my t- Twitter bio says, I am the self-proclaimed president of the guitar and lord death fan club <laughs> so if anyone reads this book because of us please let us know yes because i want to talk about it <laughs> okay so this is it for this week uh i really enjoyed a conversation Seth. thanks for I being did here too, with me. March. <laughs> um it's always great when you find a book like this um I hope you guys enjoyed it too um this was another episode of romance and the monsters uh, you can find us on social media. And you can also find this book on any, you know, available book selling website, Amazon, if you're Canadian, Indigo, Barnes and Noble. It's it's a you know, it's a very popular book. At least I think it's popular. I think it should be popular. I don't know that it's popular, but it should be. <laughs> but I, sure. I know it's available everywhere. So, and, and like, let's make it, it a movie. Let's make it a movie, everyone. Like, let's cast Adam Driver as Lord Death. Adam Driver as Lord Death. Campaign starting now. I will be Katura. I will volunteer as Tribute. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> I'm made uh, for the role. Yes. Thank you so much for listening and. Please join us next week as we talk about another book that, you know, will have a monster. Which we have not picked yet. <laughs> Just check our social media to find out what that is. Maybe one day our conclusions will not be, or outro so will not be so lame and bad. <laughs> And maybe not. Maybe we should just get used to this. 